Cardiac output is the relationship between stroke volume and heart rate. Stroke volume being the amount of blood ejected from the left ventricle and it's measured in millilitres per ejection and heart rate being the number of complete contraction cycles of the heart measured in beats per minute. So cardiac output is the litres of blood that leave the left ventricle per minute. And there's a few characteristics of stroke volume and heart rate that actually alter it over time. We'll start with stroke volume. Now, there's three main things which alter stroke volume. That's the elasticity of the chamber walls, the contractility of the chamber wall, and venous return itself. We're going to start with venous return. And what this basically means is, well, it's Starling's law. Frank Starling came up with this law or this mechanism saying that cardiac output can't actually increase before venous return does. Because if you have a tap, you can't actually increase the rate at which that you fill up a glass of water until you increase the water coming out of that tap. So by increasing venous return through the few different mechanisms such as muscle pump, respiratory pump, smooth muscle, pocket valves, gravity and atrial suction, by increasing venous return as we begin to exercise, the amount of blood returning to that right atrium starts to increase. As that starts to increase, that leads us to our second thing which can affect stroke volume. And that's the elasticity of the atrial wall. Now the atrial wall stretches as an increase in blood volume starts to return to it and the heart rate hasn't caught up yet. So more blood is entering the heart and these contractions aren't happening any faster. That means there's less space for the previous quantity of blood. So as more comes back, the atria has to expand and wait for the contraction to then empty, fill up the ventricles and then be ejected from the heart. So venous return, increase in elasticity of the atrial wall and we also have the contractility of the atrial wall. So as atrial chamber walls stretch, something known as preload starts to kick in. And just like if you pull an elastic band back slightly further, the force that it can actually produce also increases. So as atrial walls expand due to this increase in blood volume, the preload or the amount of force that this can then generate also goes up. And this affects what's known as the ejection fraction. We have a greater end diastole volume of blood in the atria and because the same thing is happening in the ventricles as well that preload of those chamber walls increases the rate at which that these start to contract at. More force is being applied to the blood that's now being ejected from the heart thus increasing stroke volume. Now a few things change to heart rate over time and these are during exercise and then during rest. During exercise heart rate gradually increases and this is known as anticipatory rise. So before we do anything, the release of adrenaline causes heart rate to start to go up. So before we've even exercised, we will see a gradual increase in heart rate. And this will get us ready. This will start oxygenating muscles. This will start the transportation of gases that we will need and begin preparing our body for exercise and what's about to come. As soon as we start to exercise, we'll see a sharp increase in heart rate. And this will go until about our submaximal levels. From that point in, we either plateau if intensity starts to level out or there'll be a gradual increase until we reach our maximum heart rate. So gradual during anticipatory rise, a far more steeper response to exercise and then a gradual plateau or gradual rise until we reach our maximum intensity. Now when we're resting, if we have been performing or training over a longer period of time, something known as bradycardia starts to take an effect. And bradycardia means that our stroke volume and the contractility and the strength of our myocardium in our heart has got to a point where we don't need to beat as many times as 60 in a minute. So below 60 is known as bradycardia, bradycardia sorry, because the force of the heart and the, the volume that we can eject per contraction has gone up to an extent that we can satisfy our resting needs with a heartbeat lower than 60. So cardiac output, the relationship between stroke volume and heart rate, and those are the factors that affect those two.